Hey developers, today we're gonna to look at how you can track your interviews and how you can make progress learning algorithms and data structures. I'm gonna show you some resources that you can use to prepare for those interviews and how you can track each interview really easily with these tools. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. And so I'm gonna show you these tools. If you're interested in Vue.js, if you're interested in JavaScript, I'll put a link in the description below. You can sign up for my mailing list and I'll notify you next time one of these videos comes up and I have some really cool videos free things like free cheat sheets and free courses. Yeah, so check that out. All right, so I'm gonna show you these resources. I think they're really powerful, really easy to use and will help you with your journey on landing that next interview. So first thing you need to do is get some, a tool like this. This is Notion, it's 100% free and I use it a lot to take notes in, but you may not know that Notion has a lot of free templates that you can use. If you're looking to land that next development job or trying to study for algorithms, this can actually help you. So first thing I would do is in this Notion document here, just click on templates on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side here, you could see all these job applications, grade calculator, but click on the job application one. And you could see here, it even gives you like a, a resume. You can upload your resumes to it. And it has this all, all this stuff to do to help you organize your interview. So let's take a look at this. So if we hit new here, we can see here we have uh, the title of the position that we're applying for. I don't know, front end engineer at, let's say at Amazon. I don't know anybody who does that at Amazon. Just kidding. Position, software engineer intern. And then you can put the stage of what interviewing you're at. So you're ready to apply, message recruiter, the URL for it is, the due date, cover letter. And then you can just click use this template. I can even save the edits that I just did to it. And then it'll add it to your Notion. And now inside Notion in here, here's where it is. So you can see all, they even give you some example applications. I have my front end engineer, I just added in. I can put the date that I applied for it. I can put my resume, my cover letter, the posting URL. So kind of uh, the reason you wanna do this is just to track every place you're applying to and how far you're getting in the process. So this can really, I don't know about you, but it's hard to keep track of all the different places you interview when you're looking for a job. Obviously I'm not looking for a job right now, but when I was in the past, I'd always get them confused and I wasn't sure which time and place I needed to be at things, uh, if, especially if I had like on-site interviews. So use something like this is awesome. Then you can go into each one of them if you want and look at the details. So they also have, uh, here's a working draft of a resume. You can actually like put your resume in here. I haven't used this, but I think you can uh, save this and you can add a cover letter, you can add icons, you can add comments. And I think you can even export this out to PDF if you wanted to. Yeah, you can even sort it by applications, by stage, by due dates. So you can have a calendar here that shows when you applied for different places and when different due dates are. Uh, this is especially helpful that when you go through the interview process, you might have a phone screening one day, you might have an onsite another day, you have, might have multiple companies. So you can keep it in track here. And also one quick tip, if you're thinking about applying for jobs, apply for more than one. Uh, you really need to make this uh, a very, you need to make this put some effort into this. I mean, your job should be getting another job. If that's what you wanna do, you need to put a lot of effort into it, especially if you're not working. Obviously, if you're working for another job, that's a different situation. But if you don't have a job right now or you're trying to become a software developer, your job should be to get a job. And that means keeping track of everything and putting a lot of applications in. There is this adage that it's a numbers game. I'd also say, don't forget about quality over quantity when you're applying for jobs. Yes, you can apply for hundreds, if not thousands of jobs, especially if you're a junior developer. But what I find works a little bit better is that you make a subset of the jobs that you wanna apply for, and then put a lot of effort into your cover letter, put a lot of effort into your resume, try to see if you can know anybody that's in that those companies so you can get a referral. I mean, try to, try to approach it that way. Make sure your resume stands out. Um, so there's a lot of tips there. So first thing, yeah, if you want to use Notion, it's a great resource so that you can keep track of your interviews. I also found a few other resources I wanted to talk about. One is this jo uh, My Job Seeker Tracker. It's from themuse.com, but it's similar. It's a little more simpler, but you can put the company, the job posting, the pre-interview, the interview information, that the second interview information, you can put the dates. Uh, I like this, I don't do this, but I've heard of sending thank you notes to your interviewers afterwards. I think it's kind of outdated, but if you wanted to do that, you could certainly can, and then you can track if you sent it. And then uh, follow-up emails. 
I feel like in tech, we're pretty, most companies, I shouldn't say that, there's a lot of companies that'll ghost you if you never hear back from them. If you really wanna get a job at a company, it's not a bad idea to send up a follow email, but give them at least a week, week and a half. Usually the recruiter, if you're talking to a big company, will tell you when you should expect to hear anything back and then obviously follow up with them. And you can track that all here in this spreadsheet. Now, one thing I, I wanna say too is when you're studying for especially a technical interview, it's a really good idea to create an algorithm study guide. Now there's lots of resources and I've done lots of videos on different like GitHub resources where you can kind of find technical, technical interview cheat sheets. There's places like Leak Code or Algo Expert. You can either buy, get them for free or purchase like a hundred different problems and that's all good. But being able to track how well you're doing on each is gonna be the difference between landing an interview and passing an interview. The thing is, is that you really need to keep track of not just the problems that you've been doing, but how well you're doing on them and are you learning in the process. Their old adage is that you just kind of grind leak code for several weeks to be able to pass a technical interview that has like these white al whiteboarding algorithms. But I really think you should do is be a little bit more strategic and then you can get a lot farther. And by the way, I've taken this study guide. I've seen a few others. Bite by Bite has one, which is a great resource, Bite by Bite. You can go ahead and Google that. What I do here is I just make a day, date, time start, time end, category, study practice, state of difficulty, and total time. So what I do is I put the date I put in there and usually typically when you're studying for algorithms, I try to do at least a half hour to an hour a day of studying and I try to make sure that I do that every day. And so I don't try to do like three or four hours. I think you'll get burnout super quickly on that. I think just a half hour to an hour a day is perfect. And then go into the spreadsheet every day after you finish your, after you finish studying put in the date, time, and then put the time end. And this is a, a very interesting technique. If you've ever tried to learn something, you'll find that doing it at the same time builds a habit. There's a whole lot of different books on how to build good habits. I think James Alter has one about atomic habits. But essentially, one good thing to do is, is if you do it at the same time every single day, it helps build that habit. And if you can track what time you're studying every day, that'll be that'll help you understand when you are studying every day so you can repeat it the next day. And then putting the category. Now the categories, you can add to this, but here is like a typical, the typical categories you see during algorithm interviews. It's behavioral questions, bit manipulation, dynamic programming, and so on and so forth. So track that and then put in here the study practice. So I kind of differentiate between you just practicing the problems where you're actually doing it and then you're just studying. So I feel like you need to do uh, mostly practice, but you should do some studying occasionally just to understand different concepts. For example, if you've never done dynamic programming problems or you've never done a, a depth for, first search, you probably need to do some studying first. And I would track that as well, because that's important. But you want to focus a lot on practice and that's where you're actually going into each problem and you're doing it. Then I put the state of difficulty. If you're using leak code, or algo expert, they're gonna tell you, are these easy problems, medium, super hard, hard, state it here. And then this is really, really important. This is the difficulty that you have. So this right here says five. I usually do a scale from one to five. I have a little rubric right here. So one is like problems that were easy for you. You got it completed, correct, and had no trouble doing so. This is like the, the best. So if you have, if you can just take a problem and do it within 10, 15 minutes, then you put one here. But if you have like, you had, you had to work out this problem a little bit and had made some errors, that's two. It took you a while to do this problem and you made some larger mistakes, but you eventually got a solution is three. And then if you're four and five is like, these are really challenging problems for you and you're completely stuck and you just kind of look up the solution. And don't be afraid when you first start this that you're gonna have a lot of these fives here which are gonna be, you're probably gonna be stuck. I would even say if you only have like a half hour, hour to study, don't spend more than like 10, 15 minutes on any individual problem. If you're stuck, you know, you're gonna realize you're stuck within the first five, 10 minutes, go ahead and just look up the answer and do it that way. Um, but then next time, you know, give yourself some more time. If you, it's like a muscle, you're gonna start remembering these type of patterns and it's gonna be easier for you and you're gonna be able to work through it. But if you're completely stuck, it's no, there's no reason to just spin your wheels for hours on it. And then this will show you the total of time it took. If you keep a track of this, you could also then plot this on a graph. I mean, 
Google Docs makes it pretty easy for you. You can just highlight them and then see per day how long you're studying. You can also get an idea of which problems that you have been practicing and which ones you haven't. So since you're you're doing the categories for each, if you see that you're, you're acing all the recursion ones, but you're not doing good at the dynamic programming ones, then that should give you an indication that you should start doing more dynamic programming ones. So you can kind of estimate which part of the algorithm spectrum that you wanna do every day. So I'd highly recommend these three things uh, if you're trying to get land that interview job, you know, get get something like Notion. Start tracking every time every time you apply for an application, when you need to follow up, what's the next steps, people's emails, and then or use a job tracker here, and then keep track of the algorithms. So that that's what I would do, and just keep at it. Obviously, this is a very hard situation um, to get a job in tech. Just keep at it. But let me know if any of these uh, work for you. Leave a comment below. Thanks.